Hi everyone, welcome to Mozambique at about uh, 5.30 in the morning. Just thought I'd do a quick little video because some people have been asking me uh, what are, a bit about the bike. Um, as you can see here, I'm just after doing a quick camping. What are the things you need to bring with you when you're overlanding on a bike or around the world or whatever? First thing is the bike itself. You need something with a 21 inch front wheel. We're on sand here now. You need to be able to handle big ruts and big puddles and deep sand and things like that. So first of all, the bike needs to have a big 21 inch front wheel with knobbly tires. Spare tubes and tire levers, handy to put them in the front. You'll need a helmet. The helmet I'm using here is a $150 helmet, but it's got a peak on, on the top of it and plenty of air ventilation because most places in the world that you travel in are going to be hot. Um, the next one is hand guards on your handlebars so that if you do fall over you don't break your hand levers. And actually in this case, because the hand, the hand grips are bad, they're kind of very um, they're very uncomfortable. I'm using this little plastic uh, from China here, re um, uh, leaner, just to uh, allow you to rev. Um, you're going to need a phone holder. Uh, there's a massive industry telling you that you need one that uh, costs a fortune. Um, this one, that because of vibrations, that's only got to do with one phone manufacturer, Apple, who seems to have its camera turned all the time while you're not using it, which is quite interesting. Um, for a bit of vanity, you don't need a GoPro pointing at you. Um, one thing I have here I bought is just a little temperature gauge down there and as you can see, well I can't see at this angle but it's probably about 25 degrees at 5 in the morning here, that's why I'm up so early. Um, the bike I'm using is a 250cc Honda, note the brand, and it's a, this one's called an XT250, uh, X or 250 Tornado. And as you can see here, we've got knobbly tires in the back, but the bike weighs probably about 140 kilos. So that's really important. If you're carrying luggage, a buddy of mine, um, Tony, thanks for the loan of this, uh, of this um, um, little fender here to keep their bags off of the, um, keep the bags off of the exhaust so they don't melt because we're using, of course, waterproof bags. Because even in the tropics, you get hammered by rain. So the next thing you'll need is, of course, you're going to need a jacket. This one is a mesh jacket because most places you travel in are, this the air goes right through that, um, um, are um, hot. But you're going to get rain anyway, even in the tropics. So yesterday I did. This one here is an internal jacket as well because the first jacket I bought for about $140 doesn't have any chest protection and I broke a few ribs a couple of years ago and realized I need some rib protection. So now I've got two things where arguably you could be using one or the other, but that's a long video. The next thing I want to show you is on the tank, either a tank bag, but it's hard on a trail bike to put a tank bag here because the horn will be blowing every time you turn, but it has been done. Check out Itchy Boots. She uses a nice small one here, and maybe I will, but I always use these bags here. You can use them at a kayak as well um, from China for a few dollars, get a good quality one, and you can put your bananas, your water, and things like that in there, stuff you want to access while you're riding. Um, the next thing, this is really important, most people will tell you you need a massive rack and a massive top box. Um, the last few years everybody's gone towards soft luggage, but how do you mount that luggage? I don't even have a rack here, but this, first of all, they're the tent pegs. You just put them there and you can separate them from the tent so that the, um, so now you're, when you're packing your tent it comes, in, it comes into a small bag, it can go anywhere else, as opposed to a big long bag. But this here, I don't know if you can see it, is actually... This unit, this fabric unit here with straps and then this, that's actually a vest that goes on you when you're doing airsoft, airsoft um, um, shooting. It's like a combat tactical vest by combat tactical, spelt with a K. $25 vest, bought that in uh, City West in Dublin. And what you do there is you just strap it onto the frame and now this becomes your rack. And it only weighs, you know, 100, 200, 100 grams or something. And now you can strap things on um, you strap our bags on with that. These here are what are called rock straps that everybody tells you you need as well. But look at this. That's actually cracked there. So I don't think that it's solved. It's again, they tell you, oh, your, your, your bags will settle and they'll get looser as you ride. Well, everybody knows that. So everybody stops and uh, checks their bags after 10 minutes of riding and, 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 and tightens the straps. Um, and this is a little auxiliary bag here with all the heavy stuff. Uh, waterproof that I've strapped on now actually this came loose and the whole bag fell through um, this here came loose and the whole bag fell through um, in uh, Eswatini 
a few days ago, but I happened just to notice it falling off the bike. So I'm now restrapping it where the secondary is integrated so that if the primary goes, the secondary falls through. And I put in a third one here uh, as well, just in case that comes off. So that's the heavy stuff like tools and things like that. So that is your round the world bike, your overlanding bike, your um, off-roading bike. It has got a windscreen on it, but not really sure if that's needed because in this kind of weather you want the breeze cooling you down. It's good on a wet day, I guess. Depends on the weather. It, it came with the bike. And so that's uh, your round the world bike. Um, thank you very much for joining and uh, stay tuned. Rory here. Bye bye.